Yo, what's up? It's your boy V Games, and today's video we're gonna be doing a mock draft for the upcoming 2022 NBA draft. So, as I'm recording this, it's one day before the draft. I'm currently really hyped for it. Um, I'm currently recording this like at 11 o'clock before draft day. Um, I know that's kind of random, but a lot of trades have happened. Uh, as you guys have been seeing, um, you probably guys probably would know this already, but Jeremy Grant just got traded. I'm going to be talking about him in this uh, simulation. And as you can see, um, with the rosters, you can see that uh, Jeremy Grant is added. I ensured that all the draft lotteries are up to standards here. Uh, all the picks are accurate. I had to fat check and everything. Um, but yeah, so the trades that happened during this um, off season and like previous off seasons that are affecting the picks, I'm going to be naming them right now. So uh, OKC, you can see that Nuggets pick here. That was originally the OKC Thunders pick. Uh, they traded for Jermichael Green, the Thunder, and they gave away the 30th pick that originally the Suns had. Ignore the, uh, the Golden State, VA Golden State. Uh, this is just the made up uh, 2k scenario i'm gonna be showing you guys how to do that later on uh so this is not just a draft lottery or draft simulation thingy but um yeah so if you guys are enjoying this type of content um you guys really liked my original draft lottery that i did a long time ago with editing i'll try to get the editing in i'm not too sure it might be just a raw uh, video but yeah if you guys are enjoying please subscribe like do all that stuff and yeah so you can see that the order draft order is the exact same as i mentioned earlier um the draft lottery is about to begin i'm just gonna check if everyone's here yep everyone's here you can see paulo banchero stuff justin uh, julian champagne all those uh, random <laughs> draftees and yeah uh, i can't wait to get started here um, so as I mentioned earlier that Jermichael Green trade was one of the uh, trades that are affecting in this draft That's why the Nuggets have the 30th pick now the Lakers have um, the eighth pick I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, they had the eighth pick, but they traded that in the Anthony Davis trade. So the Pelicans have the eighth pick um, The 12th pick the Thunder got in the Paul George trade It was originally the Clippers pick but now it belongs to the Thunder because of that Paul George trade and the recent trade christian wood to the mavs and the mavs send their 26th pick to the rockets um and yeah that's pretty much it the rockets as you can see here they got like Bobon and all that stuff i think they're on the roster here uh i gotta check back again quickly i didn't check before yeah yeah there he is marquise chris Bobon, trey burke sterling brown yeah that was the package and they got that pick as well so yeah and the contracts are up to date john wall is expiring he opted into his deal um so he's still earning 43 million for a year which kind of sucks for them but yeah we're gonna get right into the draft enough of me talking yeah so the first pick you guys probably know it already the magic got the pick i'm gonna be choosing a prospect and it's gonna be jabari smith jr yes jabari smith jr He's been uh, projected to go number one by the Magic, and it's pretty much a lock by now. I'm pretty sure nothing's going to change. It's either between Chet and Jabari, but I personally think Jabari's been the much better player uh, in his college career, as well as he can be a really good NBA player. He can shoot the ball really well. Uh, they can trade Jonathan Isaac. I know he plays power forward as well, but I think they can, they're can. they planning to strip him away. He's been injured a lot, and Jabari Smith isn't really an injury prone player and he will play a lot for the magic and make an instant impact in my opinion so yeah jabari smith first overall pick no surprises there um yeah so okc is up my team uh i've support this team in real life and i was thinking between paulo bonchero and chet holmgren that's pretty much the debate right there uh but i have to go with chet holmgren mainly because i don't know if okc is gonna get a center personally and he's been a link to the um thunder and it seems kind of wrong for chet to drop because he's been so high rated as a um a guy in this draft uh it would be kind of weird for okc to let him drop to three um but yeah i really like the paulo banchero fit as well he's also a power forward 
they need a center really badly and they're gonna take chat he's gonna be playing for sure um he can definitely develop his body uh i know he's quite skinny and everything but you know they need a center they're gonna take chat it's pretty obvious he fits on the team perfectly pretty much like a glove uh yeah he's first in many mock drafts yeah some mock drafts that that comment there by that guy it's kind of true he was actually a first in a few mock drafts that i've seen by um a couple of sources but yeah and this one a no-brainer they're gonna take paulo Bonchero. christian wood's gone he's gonna be filling in into that position he's gonna get a lot of minutes on that team he's gonna work well with kevin porter jr and jalen green in my opinion another scorer on the team they're gonna be a dangerous offensive team the rockets yeah so <laughs> no no uh shocks right here for my mock draft Paulo Bonchero goes third overall. So the Sacramento, Sacramento Kings, it's either between Kagan Murray and Jaden Ivey. I decided to go for Jaden Ivey. Uh, you guys are probably wondering why he doesn't really fit with De'Aaron Fox and uh, what is it called? Uh, Sabonis, but they're going to have to choose him. Unless they choose to trade down, uh, Jaden Ivey, he literally has John Morant potential. You see some of his highlights. My goodness, this guy can dunk. For sure, he's got some massive hops, uh, Jaden Ivey. They can have a really good backcourt. I mean, talent-wise, they have a really good backcourt with De'Aaron Fox and Jaden Ivey. Two really quick guards. Defensively, they're kind of mid, but Jaden Ivey, he's going to somehow try to fit there. They're, he didn't actually work out with the um, Kings, but what the Kings do is they just pick random guys. They literally picked Malcolm Brog... No, not Malcolm Brog, I'm sorry. Marvin Bagley. Um, so much random guys. They pick Davion Mitchell. They picked uh, Davion Mitchell. But now they're going to... Uh, what is it called? They're probably going to take Jaden Ivey here. No brainer. So Jaden Ivey. Fourth pick. It would be weird if he drops the fifth anyway. It doesn't make any sense. If he does. He's just so good at dunking. He can shoot the ball. He does everything that an NBA guard needs to do today. Um, I don't know why he says he isn't the fastest or the best shooter. He's pretty good at shooting from what I've seen. Uh, let, you, let me know down in the comments if you guys agree with this pick. It's either between Kagan Murray and Jaden Ivey in my opinion. But who knows? It's the Kings. They're going to choose anyone here. They might even trade the pick. Um, Woj recently just said in a tweet the other day uh, that there's going to be a lot of trades tomorrow. So I don't know what's going to happen. But if the picks stand, um, yeah, they're going to pick Ivey. In my opinion uh next is kagan murray he's really good as a power forward one of the best power forwards in the draft other than paulo bonchero uh and G uh what's good jabari smith this is a really good draft honestly they got a lot of big men last year there wasn't much bigs excuse me but kagan murray a no-brainer pick here again um just don't <laughs> it's like especially since they traded grant as well to the blazers uh, Murray's gonna get a lot of minutes at that power forward position as well. He's gonna be playing his natural position. So it's just a no-brainer at this point. He was projected to go around four or five, maybe even three. They even have him going to the Rockets uh, and some of them, but that's uh, kind of a big shot there. But yeah, Kagan Murray, really good prospect. Um, quick as a power forward. He has a great dunking ability. He can apparently shoot in this. I don't know if he can shoot in real life. Um, let's see the scouting report says throw it down yeah he's got some great dunks vertical jump yeah you should, you should see some of his highlights he's a good dunker there's a lot of great dunkers in this draft class paulo bonchero um G uh, jaden ivy jabari smith a lot of great dunkers now that i think of it but yeah kagan murray right there great pick for them uh second round talent i don't know what this guy's bugging bro <laughs> how is he a second round talent and he has a b minus grade but yeah this next one the pacers i got benedict mathurin in a lot of mock drafts they got ben benedict mathurin going there it's either between shade and sharp and benedict mathurin when it comes to talent wise but the reason why i picked benedict mathurin is because shade and sharp um he only played uh he's 18 he, this guy barely played in uh university he only played one game it's kind of crazy to think about that he played one game and he's in the uh, draft lottery odds he's going to be drafted as a uh, draft lottery prospect 
which is kind of insane in my eyes. Um, but he's had some really good uh, high school, you know, stuff like that. He's got some very good high school highlights. I recommend you guys watch his highlights. They're pretty cool. Uh, Canadian as well. Benedict Mathurin is also Canadian. So back to back Canadians, possibly uh, they uh, in the draft lottery, which is quite cool to see. Canada is getting really good with their prospects. But yeah, Benedict Mathurin, uh, when it comes to talent wise, he seems the more NBA ready prospect. And that's why I think the Pacers will pick him. They need a shooting guard uh, because they're planning to trade Brogdon and Turner. So yeah, Benedict Mathurin with the sixth pick. And in this video, I'm just going to be showing the draft lotteries because it'll be too long like that. I'm going to be doing a after draft review as well as another video. I don't know when this video is going to come out. It probably comes out exactly when the draft starts. So yeah, you guys can watch that along with this. I'll be sure to edit this video in time. The next pick goes to the Blazers, I believe. Um, I have Shaden Sharp. Shaden Sharp, I picked him mainly because apparently Dame and the Blazers really liked his workout. A lot of teams didn't really like his workout. So uh, when it comes to pre-draft workouts based on uh, the teams liking him, the Blazers showed them a most for that. And a lot of mock drafts have Shaden Sharp going um, at 7th. It's either between Dyson Daniels and, um, and Shaden Sharp. You may be wondering why another guard. You probably think they have too many guards. Who knows, man? They might leave. <laughs> they need a guard uh, to play in this position. So you can debate. Maybe Johnny Davis can go uh, this position here. Uh, he's projected to go there. But Shaden Sharp mainly because Dame really likes him. And this will kind of influence... Um, what is it called? Dame to stay because if they pick Shaden Sharp. I literally saw a photo of him watching his pre-draft workout. Often, NBA players don't really do that. So you can really tell that Dame really likes Shaden Sharp. He has some really good potential as well. So yeah, I kind of expect Shaden Sharp to go to the Blazers. A lot of mock drafts say so as well. So yeah. Josh Hart, um, he's probably going to resign to be honest. He really likes the Blazers. He's getting a lot of minutes. So yeah, he, he'll probably play shooting guard. Uh, maybe as a sixth man role. And eventually build his way up. Maybe take over um, Anthony Simmons. Who knows? So next is the Pelicans, and this Pelicans pick came from the Lakers. They're really down bad for trading this pick for um, Anthony Davis. They got a lot of great picks. Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram is tearing it up as well, and they get to have this pick. So let's see what they would get. So in my eyes, it's either a debate between Dyson Daniels and Johnny Davis. The reason why another sh uh, a guard... It's because they don't really have a guard. They traded Nikhil Alexander-Walker. They got Devontae Graham, who isn't playing really well. So based on, you know, we saw uh, Dyson Daniels play in the All-Star game. Um, I don't know if you guys know that already, but he played in the All-Star game. He looked really good, in my opinion. I know it's just the All-Star game, but he seems really confident with this game. He's 6'7". He's pretty tall. Uh, he could be like a Josh Giddy type guy. Um, you don't you don't you don't expect him to be going high, but he's also Australian and You know Australian players are usually doing good lottery uh, picks near a uh, Josh uh, Giddy's actual position which he dro got drafted sixth So yeah, you could tell this guy some really good potential fast player uh, He could really contribute to the Pelicans I think right away and they kind of need that because they're gonna be making a playoff run Especially with Zion back that team is scary they might trade this pick as well. <laughs> Who knows, man? They get, there's going to be a lot of trades happening um, tomorrow. I'll keep you guys posted. Maybe I might even um, do some Twitter uh, stuff. I don't know. I haven't been on Twitter lately, but I'm for sure going to be retweeting a lot of Woj tweets. I can't wait for tomorrow. Uh, let me know down in the comments. What do you guys think about tomorrow's tr uh, draft and everything? Just let me know down in the comments. Yeah, I'm going to pick Dyson Daniels with the 8th pick. A no-brainer as well. In my eyes, um, the best guard available, in my opinion, that can contribute. Uh, he's originally from the G League Ignite. He played with the G League Ignite. So he did play with, you know, somewhat NBA talent in the G League. So I really like this pick for the Pelicans if they choose to pick Dyson Daniels. So the Spurs are up next. And for the Spurs, apparently Jakob Perto might not be returning. He's in a lot of trade discussions. So in that case, I'm going to pick the best center available, which is Jalen Dern. 
you know, as an OKC fan, I really love Jalen Duren and I wish he can drop. But to be honest, um, his draft stock's been going really high recently. Uh, like he's projected to go around, you know, round one to ten, maybe. I think because a lot of drafts have him going at least twelfth, at least uh, to the Thunder. But I think the Spurs will pick him because he can be a really good lob threat with uh, Dejounte Murray, who's been a really good assister. Look at it. Um, what is it called? Dejounte Murray's passing. He's a really good passer, and I think he can make Jalen Duren an extreme lob lob threat and make the Spurs dangerous. He's a really, really strong big, and I think he can, you know, withstand all those bigs in the NBA today. So this is a, just a good pick for them because they are kind of lacking at the center position. Because other than Jakob Pertl, who do they really have? Like, think about it. <laughs> you don't really know who their backup center is. It's probably some like G League guy. So I think Jalen Duren is the best option here, uh, mainly because he can easily get some minutes on this team. So yeah, yeah. So as this guy said, Shane. Devrini, um, yeah, Jakob Pertl is going to free agency this summer. That's actually a true fact. So yeah, he could fill in nicely with Pertl, not re-signing. He could definitely start. Who knows? Um, yeah. So we're gonna be going to the Wizards, and for the Wizards, since Bradley Beal is not is um, entering free agency, who knows? He might not even return back. He's been linked to a lot of teams. Um, he didn't sign that uh, player option. So I have, uh, since uh, he's the best guard available right now, in my opinion, Johnny Davis. Um, I had Johnny Davis going around 7, 8, maybe even 6th to the Pacers. Uh, he's one of the best guards um, in this draft. And I don't see him dropping further than 10, in my opinion. So just a no-brainer here. Johnny Davis, he could probably fill in with um, uh, Bradley Beal's role. He's also a shooting guard. In this case so he could definitely get a lot of minutes on their team as they're lacking at that guard position as well so yeah yeah see Bradley Beal's um, free agent status he is a unrestricted free agent meaning that they can match his offer and they gotta you know sign him like a max contract or something to keep him back they can try to match offers and he has free roam to leave. That's basically what an unrestricted free agent means. You have the free roam to leave. And your team really can't do anything about that. Uh, and a restricted free agent is where you can actually make uh, the decisions as the team. So the next pick we have here is the Knicks. So the Knicks really dropped in this uh, lottery in my opinion. This is kind of a downgrade for them. You know, sadly. But based on these uh, mock drafts. Adrian Griffin's actually listed as a power forward. Uh, he's listed as a shooting guard here, but they really need a forward because they're going to trade Julius Randle in trade night. I believe those rumors are going to be true. Um, he hasn't been working out for the Knicks and trading Randle is probably their best option because they can get really good assets for him. So Adrian Griffin can really fit in that role. Best shooter in the draft class apparently. So uh, he can help out with that scoring for the... Knicks, which are which was pretty decent, uh, with Cam Reddish, you know, uh, RJ Barrett, they have a lot of great scorers. And Adrian Griffin, he's a really, really good prospect, probably one of my favorites in this draft class because of his shooting ability. He can dunk, he can pretty much do everything you want from a forward. So, yeah, Adrian Griffin going 11th. I don't see him dropping further than 11th, and yeah, so I got him maybe Adrian Griffin going 10th as well instead of Johnny Davis, but they really needed guards, so uh, I thought that Adrian Griffin was a forward, so they wouldn't pick him, and they would pick Johnny Davis instead. But overall, it's a win-win situation, picking either Adrian Griffin or Johnny Davis. So, um, yeah, I really like that for um, the Wizards and the Knicks. I feel like those two choices aren't bad at all and here comes the thunder pick that they got in the paul george trade that happened in 2018 i believe i don't even remember when that trade happened but they got shea Gallinari, and a bunch of picks and those bunch of picks one of those picks included this pick the 12th pick the clippers didn't actually make the playoffs or they lost in the play-in i think to the timberwolves so yeah their pick is pretty high in the draft it's considered in the lottery as it's in 12th so the OKC really got a W as they got 12th, um, 12th pick and the second pick. They might use this 12th pick in a trade for something. I don't know. This uh, pick has been rumored to be moved by OKC.
but if they don't, I got them picking Mark Williams, uh, another center. You may be wondering why another center. Uh, mainly because, in my opinion, as an OKC fan, I didn't really like the centers. They had, you know, Derek Favors and all that. Uh, they were just getting bullied in the paint. And I think that players like Chet Holmgren and Mark Williams as your centers is a really good option. I think they should let go uh, Isaiah Roby, who is currently a free agent on their team. So uh, if I can find him, I don't know where he is. There's Mark Williams. He's really low rated in this and he's a Euro stash for some reason. But yeah, he went to Duke. I don't know why he says he's undrafted uh, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I got Mark Williams going 12th. Uh, he's a really good prospect. Uh, you may be wondering why he didn't get selected earlier to the Spurs maybe. Uh, I think Duran's just better. And the Wizards and the Knicks don't really need a center because their center position is kind of filled out at the moment with Mitchell Robinson and uh, Przingis. I don't really see them moving on from them. So, yeah. So I got Mark Williams. Let me know if you guys think I'm a delusional or anything. <laughs> if my choices have been kind of weird. But personally, I think they've been up to standard. Like most draft, uh, mock drafts have been the same as mine. I just made a few changes here and there like Jaden Ivey going forth. A lot of them had Kagan Murray as well. But yeah, I got Mark Williams dropping to the Thunder. This would be an ideal situation because he's a really good shot blocker. One of the best um, rim protectors in the draft. Uh, and yeah, they just got an upgrade on their defense side of things. And Derek Favors, you know how he re-signed. He can be a really good mentor for those guys. Uh, Chet Holmgren and Mark Williams. They already have enough guards anyway, so just stacking up on bigs is probably their best case scenario in my opinion. And yeah, this 13th pick next is by the Hornets. We got two more picks left uh, in this lottery. So I got them picking Jeremy Sochan, uh, mainly because, you know, PJ Washington's been on the move. A lot of power, a lot of their power forwards are kind of, uh, you know, they're kind of weak. If you consider Miles Bridges a power forward, they're not really weak. But since I think Miles Bridges is a small forward in my eyes, I think that maybe Jeremy Sochan is the best option. He is the best talent wise in during a round that's left for them at the forward position and in general. So I think that Jeremy Sochan is a great option. He can dunk, he can be a nice lob threat for Lamelo. They got some really nice dunkers on that team. And I think Jeremy Sochan can just help them be an even better, you know, finishing team. So yeah, based on the talent wise and everything like that. Uh, the Hornets should select Jeremy Sochan. Literally every single mock draft I've seen selected Jeremy Sochan. So if they don't pick Jeremy Sochan, I'll be really shocked if he's available at least. So yeah. And now for the last pick, uh, Jeremy Sochan. I don't, it says he has an injury. I don't know why. I really like Jeremy Sochan personally as well. He played for Baylor and Baylor has produced some really good talent. Davion Mitchell is one of them. And now Jeremy Sochan. So yeah, Baylor has been a really good uh, college for NBA talent. So getting Jeremy Sochan is not a bad thing at all. So this last pick, um, I just really just looked at mock drafts mainly. I don't really know who this guy is, Oche Abanji. I think he played for um, Kansas, I believe. He's apparently a nice wing and I guess they need a wing right now. Uh, they don't really have a proper wing if you consider Isaac Okoro as a wing. Um, he just adds extra depth and he's also a shooting guard apparently so since Colin Sexton is probably going to leave they can probably use Oche Abanji as that maybe they can maybe use Blake Wesley but Blake Wesley um, in many mock drafts have him going late first round so based on the projections I, I'll pick Abanji they need a shooting guard in replacement for Sexton as well now that I realize about that so yeah that will do it for this video I'm going to see who else they pick um, the computer decides to pick so I'm gonna sim to the end of the draft and see here you can see all the selections I'll go pretty slowly for you all to summarize what happened here my mock draft and who I think will be selected in the draft lottery 1 to 14th if you guys want to pause the video let me know Ty Ty Washington goes to the Hornets um, I guess they you they'll need a backup point guard if they don't really like IT because I think IT is like their only backup point guard uh, that I know of, maybe um, you know you can they can play for Terry Rozier might lead too. So yeah, that's not a bad pick. Uh, Osman Dang, yeah, he's also a pretty good prospect, French prospect, international prospect, going to the Hawks. 
Uh, I can kind of see him going here. A lot of um, projections got him going there. Tari Erson. Yeah, he's projected to go there as well. Donovan Williams. I don't know who this is. It's probably another bust. Classic Timberwolves. Another bust they pick. Kendall Brown. Uh, yeah, a lot of... I don't know who this guy is. Jake Clavera. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. Jalen Williams. Uh, he's going pretty high in this draft. Yeah, I, I remember him being low, like second round or something. Grizzlies got Walker Kessler. Kind of makes sense. Just another center because they probably might trade Steven Adams and Walker Kessler can develop there. Sixers pick Nikola Jovic. Um, yeah, I guess I can see that. Uh, the Sixers picking Nikola Jovic. Originally, the Nets had this pick and they decided to give it to the, um, uh, to the Sixers. And they would take the Sixers uh, next year's pick. So, yeah, this could be a Brooklyn player. But unfortunately, they decided not to choose this Nikola Jovic, a really, really raw prospect. And they're kind of lacking at the power for precision anyway. So, you just help out with depth. Malik, Braham, uh, Blake Wesley, all of those guys. Jalen Hardy, um, probably one of my guy favorite guys in the draft. Yeah, he's, he should go around there as well. Bochamp, yeah, I expect Bochamp to go here as well. Uh, the Nuggets, yeah, he's projected to go around here too, so that makes sense. Uh, second round, eh, it's pretty similar here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caleb Houston, does he go to the Raptors? Uh, I really want him to go to the Raptors, he's Canadian as well. Has a great relationship with Scotty Barnes, apparently. Unfortunately, the Raptors didn't pick on him. Uh, where are the Raptors? Did they trade their pick or something? I think they can probably trade it down or something. I don't know. I turned trades off. But yeah, that will do it for this video. Let me know how I did on social media. Check out my Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Um, just let me know how I did. Roast me in the comments if you guys like. Share it with your friends. Um, you know, if you disagree with any of my picks, please let me know down in the comments. I like to have that interaction with you guys. Or whoever watches this video. Uh, that really means a lot. You know, having that interaction and stuff. But yeah, just make sure to check out my socials down below. I'll put them down below if you guys want to check that out. It's been your boy V Games. Take care. I'll make an after draft video soon. As soon as I have this video out. But yeah, hopefully I haven't talked too much. And bored you guys. But yeah, I'll make sure to make this video entertaining as possible. But yeah, it's been your boy V Games. Take care guys. Yo guys, what's up? It's your boy V Games. Sorry about that. Uh, I meant to actually show you guys how to do the 2K scenarios thing. Um, so you guys can do basically NBA start today. Basically, you know they how they had that in the previous 2Ks. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick. So if you go to 2K uh, share scenarios and you click on a new save. Uh, yeah, you should you, literally that's all you have to do. You just got to click two buttons. You just go to 2K share scenarios. Make sure to do that. And then you should find it here. So I use this one by this guy uh, for the grant trade. There's probably going to be much more trades. So keep a lookout uh, for any updated ones. It should say the date or maybe or something like that. Or like a start today thing. So just pick the latest one. Uh, you can go to new if you want. And try to find the latest one that's been put up by the 2K community. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. Anyways, that's been your boy V Games. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry if it was a little too long. Um, I was kind of blabbering all around and stuff. So yeah, take care guys.